Testing, testing, testing. Okay, we still got audio. Uh, mic check, mic check. Hey, you may not recognize it, but it's still A2B Gaming. Got a new little set I made, new little uh, setup in general, and new microphone. Don't worry, the old microphone still exists. I'll still be using it for certain videos, but for these, I like to have my hands free. So let's just go ahead and get right into why you're here. Today, we're gonna take a look at the RTX 3070 from Zotac. I've got this card about maybe, I've had it for maybe a little over two or three weeks now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I did a review on the 3060 Ti and I was able to exchange that card at Micro Center for this one. Uh, they happen to have one in stock. So I wanted to kind of do my own research and see whether or not um, it was worth the upgrade from a 3060 Ti to a 3070. And there's a, a bit of a price difference. So the 3060 Ti that I had from MSI retailed for $449.99. This one's $100 more, so $549. And uh, I got some thoughts on the card. I, I, I think most people will be happy with it, but I'm skeptical whether or not it's worth $100 and we'll kind of get into that. Starting with the card itself and the build quality, it's very good. I was a little concerned when the gentleman from Micro Center told me that Zotac was on the lower end scale of everything. Uh, I took the card out of the box and I was immediately impressed with the finish of the gray and black kind of plastic and aluminum build. It's got a metal back plate that looks really nice, uh, very minimal branding and a lack of RGB, which was honestly kind of refreshing. It does have one white LED on the front that I think is pretty, uh, it's pretty minimal. It's not super outlandish, super gamery. The card itself also is very, very compact. I'll throw up the measurements here, but it's, it's one of those things where I think this card, if you're working with a cramped uh, case, maybe you have a small form factor build, Maybe you're working in something new like the NR200. This is gonna fit in a lot of cases. Um, I noticed that when I was first looking at it, the metal fins do extend a little bit past the PCB. Um, and I thought for a moment that maybe this could be deshrouded. And it's it's there is a fin stack there that would still take up a little bit of room. So you're not gonna save a ton of space if you try to deshroud this at all. It also has just the standard two eight pin connectors. So you're not having to worry about the new 12 pin connector that Nvidia is pushing out. So it will just take two eight pin connectors, which is nice. And on the back side, you do have three DisplayPort outputs as well as one HDMI 2.1. So for those of you who are living in the future and have really nice 4K, 144 Hertz TVs or monitors, uh, congrats, you can utilize that. Now, as far as this card goes regarding thermals and noise and performance, it's it's tough for me to really say because truth be told, I think the card is good. It, the 3070 is really good. I had a 1070 for three years and this is a huge performance boost. But after getting a taste of that 1070 to 3060 Ti upgrade path, I, I don't know if I feel the same um, enthusiasm that I felt with that upgrade from 3060 Ti to this. Uh, looking at some of these benchmarks, you can see that the performance gap is not insane at 1440p. Uh, one little note to point out too is I'm not a huge YouTuber. I don't have like a ton of just extra parts lying around. I did manage to upgrade my motherboard from a X470 ASUS Prime to a X570 Aurorus Master. So I am getting the full PCI Gen 4 experience and the 3060 Ti did not have that. That was on PCI Gen 3. So I think with that, if you look at these scores, I'll put them up here. The scores are not that extreme in terms of a gap. Yes, there is a gap. And if I had a 4K monitor to, to really test this out on, I'm sure we'd probably see bigger gaps at the 4K level. But most people don't play on 4K. A lot of people are still 1080p, 
a lot of people are still 1440. Um, 4K is a very small market from all the data that's out there that kind of represents what gamers are actually using. And I look at these gaps, I look at these differences. I don't know if the extra 10 to 20 frames per second really is worth the extra hundred dollars at least in my opinion now some people might feel differently about that um i i personally look at like performance to dollar and uh it's it's no secret the 3060 ti is the best out of all of them a lot of channels have have talked about that and i i do think that this is a good card if you get this you're gonna like it and that brings me to my next point recent Developments have led to um, a lot of card makers, such as Asus, announcing that they will be upping the price of their cards due to tariffs. And I know I have friends that are probably going to be in the same boat as a lot of you, where they are kind of just willing to buy whatever they can get their hands on at this point. And I think that that's going to be what most people end up falling into if you're really really desperate to get a card. The way I've come to think about it is that if this card is on the shelf and you can pick one up and you were planning on, you know, spending only 449 for a 3060 Ti or 400 if you get a reference model, if this is available and you end up just biting the bullet and getting it, you're going to be happy with it. I just think that if they're both available at the same time and people have the option to, you know, sit and comprehend what they actually want to buy rather than just nabbing whatever's in stock first. I, I do think that the 3060 Ti, in my opinion, is the better purchase overall from the 3070 in terms of just pure performance to price ratio. If this was, the 3070 is in such a weird spot because it's $100 more than the 3060 Ti, but it's, I don't know if it's necessarily a hundred dollars better performance. Now again, at 1440 and at 1080p, at 4K, I have no idea because I don't get to use it. Um, I don't have a 4K display, so I can't really test it out. If I'm at a store and everything is in stock, I think I'd rather spend less money on the 3060 Ti. And if I'm gonna go up in price, I'd probably just skip the 3070 altogether and just get a 3080 because some of these damn 3070s are close to what MSRP is for a 3080. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do that. Asus, for example, with these tariffs that have uh, come back into effect and started affecting everything from cards to power supplies to whatever, Asus announced that one of their 3070s is gonna be up to 770 bucks. Like, ugh, you know, so. I, I don't want people to, to, you know, go out and panic buy. And I also know there's going to be some people who are tired of seeing reviews for things that they can't buy in the first place. But I think that this is an important note to make is that this card is good. It's just maybe not worth the extra hundred bucks. That's my opinion. So you do your own research. Obviously, watch more than one reviewer. You'll probably get different views and you got to just kind of see where you fall on that. That's how I would do it. So that's how I hope you do it. One thing that I didn't like about this card out of the box, um, this blender test that you'll see on the screen here, this is stock performance and it's, it's relative um, to something that I find annoying about the card more than anything. So the card itself being so small, it is a dual fan design, as you can see. Um, it's, it's thermal capabilities are not what I am accustomed to, I guess I would say. The card itself idles at around 50, 55 C, kind of in that range. And a lot of card manufacturers do this thing where they implement a freeze. Oh shit. I think my air conditioner just kicked on. Ah, God damn it. One second, everybody. So the card itself has a pretty uh, capable cooling system, I would say. The thing that I have an issue with is that because the temps idle at around 55 degrees Celsius, and you can see on this chart here, when they ramp up, uh, they do a decent job cooling it. The blender test for the classroom, which takes about two minutes with this card, uh, did get the temperatures up to about 70 degrees, 71 degrees Celsius, somewhere in that range consistently every single time. 
The thing is though, as you can see, when the thing decides that it's done and its, it's temperatures start to drop, the freeze mode where the fans don't do anything in an effort to be, you know, no noise or anything like that, you can see that they ramp down to zero RPM and then there's these spikes where it kicks back in. What's happening is that the card itself cannot maintain the temperature threshold that it wants for that freeze mode fan cooling. So because it idles at 50 degrees, 55 degrees Celsius, the fans just go off and then they come back on and then they go off and then they come back on and it does that just endlessly. So what happens is that you get this really annoying coil whine from the smallest fan here that kicks in. And it is so obnoxious, it's so much more obnoxious than just setting the fans to like 30% speed and just calling it good. And then by doing so, when the fans are running actually pretty low, I think close to like their lowest RPM, uh, the card stays cool. It drops down to like 35 degrees Celsius, you know? So uh, if you want my suggestion, if you pick up this card, don't bother with the auto fan profile. I know m most of you may not even worry about that to begin with, but set a custom curve and just set the minimum to just be the lowest, you know, 20 to 30% it'll go. Uh, and it's a lot more pleasant to listen to. So that really is, is all I have to say about the card itself. It's, it's good. It's a good performing card. Um, it has some flaws that are just, you know, from the size, um, from the, the cooling implementation of, of this dual fan design. Uh, but overall, I mean, it, it's, it's a positive card. I, I, I'm not upset with the purchase. I'm just questioning whether or not it's actually worth all the extra money. I mean, $100 to some people is nothing. $100 to somebody else is everything. So... I do encourage you to, to obviously watch your own reviews as well and kind of get your own conclusions on what you think of all this. But um, yeah, that's, that's probably gonna do it for me. I am happy with the card, if not a little bit skeptical of whether or not it deserves this $550 price tag when a 3060 Ti exists. So um, that's probably gonna do it for me, everybody. I, I hope you enjoyed, um, if you liked it, leave a like, that would help the channel out a lot. Consider subscribing if you're not. Um, I also have a Patreon too, that you can join if you'd like to help support the channel. Um, I also have another channel with, that I do games and podcasts on over on the buddy system. I'll put a link up here and there'll be a link in the description as well. Uh, and before I forget, quick shout out to all the people over on Patreon right now. All right, shout out to Benjamin Ladinsky, Christian Logan, Diana St. Charles, Cole Cheryl, Lasky, and Jake. Thank you so much for your continued support over on Patreon. I cannot express how much it helps. Um, every Patreon uh, donation that comes in is uh, appreciated immensely because it does help with little things like microphones and stuff like that. So thank you very much for helping continue to support this channel and help it grow. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel but can't do it monetarily, that's absolutely understandable. Maybe consider just sharing this with a friend that you think might like it as well. That helps a ton. So, uh, other than that, everybody, thanks for watching if you stuck around this long. And uh, shout out Linus for stealing my look. I get it, man. It's all good. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. Peace.